No, I think it's the, you know, we're in the melt up. I had somebody ask me today, you know, uh, is the election going to cause us not to have the melt up? I said, we've been melting up, you know, it's, it's, we're up, um, the S&P is up 68% and the, the NASDAQ 84%, I think to the highs, um, from the October 22 lows. So, you know, that's a melt up in my book. We've been melting up. I think the next stage will be a, what I call parabolic final stage to this market. So I think we're coming to the end of a 42 year secular bull market thing I've talked about with you many times. Mm -hmm. Um, And of course we're two weeks out from an election that in my opinion is probably the most important election in this country's history. Uh, It's easy to overlook, uh, you know, civil war Lincoln and certainly George Washington, but, but I think at least in modern history, you know, the choices here are stark. And uh, we either go in a direction where we kind of begin to take back and get back to a capitalistic free market economy and back to, you know, solutions that are not all government solutions and get away from what I call the new world agenda, new world order agenda of the, the left. Um, or we go in the direction of we could we could see the court packed and all of a sudden you don't have a constitution anymore because you've and you, you may not have two party elections anymore. So I think it's that stark that uh, I know there are people that are, you know, say I'll never vote for Trump. But boy, the alternative is basically we won't see America back to the way it ever was before. So so I think we're two weeks out from that. Um, people keep saying, well, does that mean the melt up's going to end here? And I said, not necessarily. In fact, I don't think so. My, I'm, my conviction is still high that we're going to, I, ju- I just raised my S&P target to 7,500 uh, from 7,000. I think we could be there this year. So, you know, within the next uh, basically two and a half months. Uh, and it doesn't have to if it rolls over. I mean, if it uh, takes into the first quarter, that's fine. But I th- a parabolic means you can cover a lot of ground in a hurry and we'll see a rally like we've never seen. Uh, don't know whether it'll be completed by the end of the year or not, but it's going to be, I think, a big rally. So um, that's kind of where I stand. Um, obviously, there are wild cards that can come in between what's going on in the Middle East. Um, you know, certainly Ukraine, although there doesn't seem to be likely imminent thing there that's going to change. Um and and what can happen between now and election time or even at the election there's uh, as i said today on twitter i think the things we have to worry most about is the left really has made it very clear that it's almost under no circumstance do they want trump to be president again so that means they they feel they are justified in doing almost anything to stop him we've seen two assassination attempts We've seen, um, you know, they've they've got, you know, sitting senators saying um, on their side saying we're we're not going to certify his election if he wins, um, and you've got certainly the cheat that's been going on. So, um, and they're setting up, you know, when the Justice Department um, files suit against the state of Virginia for trying to clean their rolls up, their voting rolls up, because they're you know, an awful lot of illegal um, immigrants um, that are uh, not by law supposed to be able to vote and just department sues to leave those those names in there. Uh, that tells you exactly what the left is trying to do. I hate to be so blatantly political here, but we're two weeks out from something that's, I think, going to be very, very important. Yeah. Well, and I mean, it's, it's, in my opinion, I think it's completely reasonable for people to share their thoughts and opinions on this stuff. It's the only way that information moves around. So yeah, I I think you sharing that is kind of part and parcel to the point of doing stuff like this. Now, obviously we have to beg the question here though. The S and P made what a high today of 59, 27, 75 long way away from that. What's the, what's the catalyst to move from, let's just call it, you know, 59 and a quarter to 7,500 in your eyes? Yeah, I think, uh, I certainly think there's a setup here where I could make the case that we might see a 3% pullback. So, you know, back down to uh, certainly 5,700 wouldn't surprise me. 
but I don't think we're setting up for a big reversal here. You know, it's a, a bit of a sell-off, and you know, certainly the Nasdaq could be a little more than that. Russell could be a little more than that. Um, but ultimately, I think it's any pullback here. I think is short-lived, might last several days. Um, and then I think the real move here is what has moved this market for a long time here, which is we still have an awful lot of people who have one foot out the door. Uh, they 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 see the momentum and they feel like they have to be part of it, but they're nervous as hell and they're saying, you know, this thing could end any time. I think that wall of worry is a source of fuel to keep this thing going. Um, what can move it? Well, I'm seeing clearly... The earnings are still in pretty good shape. The economies uh, defied logic in terms of all the tightening that was done, and yet it's still reasonably strong. You're probably still going to get a 3% GDP number. Um, and uh, the consumer seems to have enough left to keep going uh, through the year. So I think at least for the next quarter, there's you know basically all systems go. Interest rates, although they are scaring people because they've backed up, um, my look at the charts and my look at the overall inflation picture and the economy, et cetera, I think we're bottoming in the bond market and, and topping in rates here. We had a back up from 360 back to, you know, almost 410, you know, 409, I think. Um, and I think we're the next move, I think, is going to take interest rates down to three and a quarter, maybe even 3%. And ultimately, as I've said, uh, before we, before we get through the melt up, we could see two and a half on the 10 year. So from, you know, from over 4% down to two and a half is a hell of a move in rates. Uh, it will keep the economy from tanking anytime in the next few months. And I think it'll be wind at the back of the market. At the same time, I think the dollar as rates start rolling over again, the dollars poised for a big drop. I think that's bullish. So there's a lot of things there, I think, to complete this. Now, people have to remember, the valuations are very high. We're 42 years into a secular bull market, certainly uh, two years into a very strong uh, cyclical move. So uh, you know, I'm not pretending that this is the beginning of you know a long run, but I think you're going to cover a lot of ground in a short period of time on the upside. Yeah, back, uh, I guess it's probably several weeks now. I don't know whether it's a month, but certainly in the last month, several weeks. Um, I raised my target on gold. I had a $3,000 target, what I call pre-bust target, meaning before next year's global bust. Um, and probably a first quarter, you know, probably happened in the first quarter. I had a 3,000 target. And when, when gold was starting to push up against um, that, you know, it had been kind of, consolidating in 24, 500 area. Um, around there, I, I said, I'm raising my target. So my new target is 3,400. I think we could be there in the first quarter, very, very much think that's likely. Um, so I'm very bullish gold here. Um, you'll have pullbacks along the way as with every market. So, you know, maybe it goes to 2,900 and pulls back a hundred points or something, but I, I think we're on our way to, you know, 3,400. Um, and then in the bust, with as with most assets, it's going to go down. So you might go 3,400 back to the mid-20s, you know, 2,500, 2,400. You might even go all the way back to 2,100 where it broke out from, you know, last year. Um, and that would be, you know, that would be um, uh, more than a 30, probably a 35% pullback, I would guess. So 35 to 40% pullback. I think that's possible in the bust. Um, but, you know, big run up here, correct. And then, you know, my target for end of this decade, early next is 20,000. So there's there's a lot of upside in gold still to come. <laughs> and got to talk about the catalyst there. Um, it's it's hovering around 2712. So I assume it has everything to do with the your broader thesis. So, but what's the order of operations here? We have market melt up, then we're talking about gold starting to run. How does the relationship between these different things work in terms of specifically the gold estimate? Yeah, I've been pretty 
consistently saying for the last year or two that I felt the metals and the equity market would move up together. And mm-hmm. I had, and people would take me to task on my bearish oil call because they go, oil and gold always go up together. I go, no, they don't always go up together and they're not going to go up together. And they obviously haven't. So um, I think, yeah, the, I think they're co- coincidental. I think you will see the equity market you know, melt up to 7,500, I think, you know, the S&P and I think gold, you'll see, you know, it's not a melt up, but it'll run to 3,400. Um, and I have 75 on silver. Um, so, you know, there's, there's big runs, I think, in metals and in the equity markets and in bonds. And what drives the gold market? I think it's a weak dollar. You know, the dollar's been in a counter trend rally here for a while. I think that's pretty much run its course I would expect from this 103 and change to see the dollar down to certainly down to the mid nineties and maybe 90 uh, within the next three, four months, five months. And ultimately down to, I, I had been saying 80, I've raised a little bit to 82 is my ultimate dollar target. Um, And that happens, could happen early in the bust or before the bust, but given how far it has to come, I wouldn't be surprised if the early part of the bust, you're still going down in the dollar. In the in the bust, in the guts of the bust, the dollar can rally back to 120. You know, people are going to f- flee to safety you know, around the world. The dollar will still get that flight safety trade. But for the next six to nine months, I see the dollar heading straight down. That's probably the biggest um, driver of gold uh, is that weak dollar. And then, you know, lower interest rates certainly helps gold. Um, and, you know, fears fears of Fed easing leading to inflation could be a part of the narrative. Like I said, I'm not, I'm worried about deflation, not inflation, but that doesn't mean the market won't worry about inflation. And how does silver play along here? Because silver was interesting. It, it hit a high of 33 and about a quarter, um, like the beginning of this month, end of last, I think. And it's been kind of running a bit sideways here. It had a little bit of a pullback and then has been running sideways. So, yeah, curious how silver fits in. I expect, uh, you know, and it could be momentarily, you know, tomorrow, the next week, um, I expect silver to have, to outpace gold. You know, I think it's it's starting up here. It, uh, it kind of had to pull back. I think it got ahead of itself a little bit this week. Um, but ultimately, it looks, I said yesterday, I think on Twitter, you know, we're there. Basically, we're at that point where it's about to break above that 33 level um, that it had gotten to. And I think you can probably see it up to mid 40s um, in the next, you know, certainly this year, maybe in the next couple months. Um, and then from there, um, you know, may keep going or may pull back for a little while before and but ultimately 75 and i think so gold and silver i think trade together with as is normal in bull markets silver outpaces gold in the middle market bull markets um so and i think that's going to be the case the miners i think will will finally um reward investors who have been very frustrated by the fact that you know certainly gold's done very well and and silver's up 90 percent from its lows of a couple of years ago um and yet you know, the miners have been languishing. So they're starting to get a little more bid. Uh, and I think that's just going to accelerate from here.